بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعلك الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi عجلالله تعالى فرج الشريف for the blessing of another loud salawat Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us amongst his companions and sincere soldiers with the blessing of another loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wal anadahum. Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We send our deepest condolences uh, on these Sadding and grieving nights, the nights of martyrdom of Lady Fatima, Salamullah Aleha, Lady of Light. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that by the blessing of these nights and by the blessing of the vicinity of the shrines of Ahl Bayt Alayhi Salam in Karbala, to hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi, Ajalallah Taala Farajuh Sharif. Inshallah, within these two nights, we will be discussing. Uh, practical lessons we can learn from the life of Lady of Light Fatima al Zahra, Salamullah Alaiha. Even though her life was very short, only 18 years of age, she and she was martyred and she was killed by the oppressors. But inshallah, we will see by covering only two aspects of her life how many lessons we can learn within our day-to-day -day life and gives us a perspective and makes us think differently, inshallah, after these two nights. The first night tonight, our discussion will be about a very important aspect and very important characteristics of her life and that is defending the Imam of her time, defending Imam Ali alayhi salam. Inshallah, we will mention five ways that she defended her Imam. She's not defending her husband. She is defending the Imam of her time, Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. The five ways that she went, what the five ways that she did what she did, it's not because Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam is her husband and she sees it as I have to go and take the right of my husband. No, she did what she did to defend the right of her imam, the imam of her time. That by itself gives us a very beautiful action item and that is for us to learn from her 
and apply this teaching and these five ways that she defended her Imam for us to defend the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi. May Allah hasten his reappearance. This is what we are going to learn. And how much she sacrificed for the Imam of her time and how much are we willing to sacrifice for the Imam of our time. This is what we're going to learn from her. This is what we're going to draw from very small uh, segments of her life. Only probably maximum three months, the last three months, inshallah, will be tonight and the rest will be for tomorrow. We will cover more of her life, but we are tonight focusing on the last three months, the last three months to four months of her uh, last month of her life. So defending Wilaya, defending the commander of the faithful Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam as the Imam of her time, in what way? Let us learn and apply it to our life, inshallah. Number one. After the Khalafa and the Caliphate was usurped, she comes out and she goes to the masjid where Abu Bakr with the companions and Muhajirin and Ansar were seated. She comes there. One way that she defended her Imam was through giving a sermon, khutbah. She, we have two khutbahs, two sermons from her. One, Khutbah al-Fadakiyya or Khutbah al-Fadak. And the second Khutbah, the second sermon, a group of women from the wives of companions of Rasulullah came to visit her because of what happened to her. They came to her and they asked her, how are you doing? She gave another sermon. Within these two sermons, she has covered Islam and all of its teaching. She has covered Quran within the Qutbah al Khutbah al Fadakiyya. She, she brought more than 20 verses to prove her point. That's the beauty of the teachings of Ahlul Bayt, where we don't find it anywhere else other than the school of Ahlul Bayt. And that's what we see within their talk, within their narrations, we see the verses of Quran one after one after one. Within the sermon, sermon of Fadak, Khutbah al Fadakiyya, she brings more than 20 verses of the Holy Quran and she relies on them. And she brings them as a proof that, see, I am taking, I want to defend the Imam of my time because of these verses. She's trying to awaken them with the verses of the Holy Quran. Khutbah al Fadakiyya, meaning, number one, she didn't sit home quiet. One and two will be together. She came out of her house to defend the Imam of her time. If it wasn't by for defending the right of her, the defending the Imam of her time, she wouldn't come out and give lecture in the middle of the men. She comes out after. I, inshallah, I really encourage brothers and sisters tonight and tomorrow within these couple of nights of Fatimiya, and after. The second Fatimi where we are and the, before the third Fatimi, yeah, the translation is there. That becomes a very good action plan for us to download it. You can go to alislam.org and you just put sermon of Fedak. It takes you about 17 minutes, let's say 20 minutes to read this sermon from the Lady of Light, Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah. Read it from the beginning to the end. What is she trying to uh, convey to you and I and to the people? We have to be very, very uh, caution of neglecting this sermon. Very beautifully recited, very beautifully uh, said, beautiful sermon. Within it, Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha brings what, uh, why Salah is wajib, why Allah made Salah wajib, why Allah made fasting wajib, why Allah made zakat wajib. All of the reasons for our ahkam, it's been mentioned in it beautiful sermon again 17 to 20 minutes we owe to her at least to read once her sermon so she comes out before coming out she wears complete hijab inshallah you will read it and the hijab of fatimi which becomes a role model for our sisters how should they wear their hijab 
and by she covering completely head to toe and her dress was so long that she used to step she was stepping on the dress on the jilbab that she was wearing and she was surrounded by her grandchildren and by other sisters and all the Bani, uh, the women of Bani Hashim. She was surrounded when she comes to the masjid of Rasulullah. They place a curtain and she stands behind the curtain. And she, uh, before she starts, I read, say the Zahra heaved a sorrowful sight from her scorched and aggrieved heart such that all of those presented were affected by it and began to weep she started a lecture and telling Abu Bakr to defend the imam of her time even though she was talking about fadak that they took from her the fadak that was given to her during the during the life of her father so this was not an earth this was not inheritance it was given to her during the life of her father but they say well one hadith Abu Bakr narrates which there is no other person narrated this hadith he only heard it from Rasulullah that says as prophets we don't leave inheritance behind nobody has validated this narration mentioned by Abu Bakr by 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 she's by she coming to the masjid and reading the sermon beautiful sermon where the narrators tell us when she spoke it was as rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was speaking she was, she lectures she's trying to take her right back fadak when the right of fadak is being given back she can talk about the right to defend uh, the right of khalafa the god-given khalafa of uh, uh, to Imam Ali alayhi salam, she can take it back and she can argue about it. So she, number one, she comes out. She doesn't sit home. For us, defending the Imam of our time and the many misconceptions that are out there, have we come, come out of our comfort zone, starting reading and researching and trying to answer, answer these misconceptions about the Imam of our time? And about the shayyur, about the deen, about wilayah of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam or not. Or we are so much occupied with our day-to-day -day activities, day-to-day -day life, with our bills that needs to pay, with our rents and mortgage that we need to pay, that we have forgotten the religion completely. That we have forgotten wilayah of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam completely. That we have forgotten Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi ajrallah ta'ala for Ajah Sharif completely. Bloods were shed and sacrifices were made for you and I to be the followers of Ahl al-Bayt We cannot take this for granted. This religion that God to you and I, we are responsible. Each and every one of us, we are responsible to the sacrifice that were made for this religion to get to you and I. We are responsible for it. So action plan that we get the first action plan for us to read ceremony of fadak number two defending the religion requires us to gain the knowledge of the religion and coming out of our comfort zone using our social media using whatever we have at our disposal to spread the knowledge of ahl bayt and defend the cause of ahl bayt so that's first said fadak by sheep we have a uh, an author and researcher by the name of Abdul Mun'am Hassan as Sudani. This individual, he said he was from the non Shia. His cousin was Shia. He says that I went to the house of my cousin and we tried not to ever, uh, not to at all debate about Shia's Sunni uh, debates. We were just cousins, relatives, we had a relative talk and just a normal talk. While I was in his house, while he went and he was preparing tea or dinner or something, the radio was on. The radio was on. And I started hearing, a person said, now I will read you the sermon. I didn't know who was the sermon. The sermon was read by this individual within the radio. 
while I was listening, it touched my, it touched the deepest point in my, at my, of my heart. And I start shedding tears of the eloquence of this and the beauty. And I was thinking there's no one, no matter how much eloquence they have within their talk, no matter, no matter, no matter how much knowledge they have, no one can give this kind of sermon. And I was just listening and I was just shedding tears after tears after tears. And then, by the end, he said that this sermon is by the Lady of Lights, Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha. It was shocking. I was shocked. It was surprise that Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, giving such a sermon. When he came, I couldn't hold myself. We started discussing and we start on and on and on. And the journey began, began for him. And he became Shia and he wrote a book about Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha Binur Fatima Tadayt. It's in Arabic and also has been translated into Farsi. I haven't seen, unfortunately, a translation of it in English. That the light of Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha by her ceremony of Fadak, she guided an individual to accept the path of Ahl al Bayt salam and the path of Ali ibn Abi Talib. See? Ceremony given 1400 years ago, but today, and in our era, it's the cause of guidance for at least one individual that we know of. There are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that have been guided by this ceremony and other ceremonies. But at least this person wrote a book and he was a researcher and he wrote it. So we talked about two ways that Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayha defended the Imam of her time coming out of her house with the way that she came out and she gave a ceremony she lectured the people that's one occasion and the other occasion as we mentioned in the beginning of our lecture that the uh, wives of the ansar and muhajin and ansar came to her house asking how she was doing and she gave another ceremony she gave another ceremony which it's a very strong ceremony within that ceremony she is kind of for a lack of a better term fortune telling she was telling them what is happening and what will happen in the near future you neglected the imam of the time you neglected amir al-mu'minin ali ibn abi talib salam. not that he is my husband and i'm defending my husband no he is the imam of your time i'm defending my imam you should defend him you should follow him you should be with him because she could see she has the knowledge in Mus'haf Fatima that she has been she has which was passed one after one all the news were given to her what will happen after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. she said that this animal will give birth and rather than milking it milk you will milk blood from this animal that you let be born without the guidance without the path of Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam without the teaching of the commander of the faith or Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam wait give it a couple of decades and you will see how much bloodshed will be there we have two schools school of Saqifah and school of Ghadir School of Ghadir, Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, his justice, his tranquility, his love, his passion for serving others, and stories, numerous, numerous, never ending stories of the virtues of Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, where according to a hadith, we cannot count the merits of Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. Nobody can count the merits of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. That's the school of Ghadir. That promotes freedom of talk, freedom of expression. All that is that we think about utopia, it's within that four years and nine months of the government of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. And we see what the school of Saqifah did. I'll bring a couple of examples from what the school of Saqifah did. The child that the school of Saqifah gave birth to, 
What did this child do? One of them, Hajjaj bin Yusuf al Thaqafi. He was the governor of Iraq by the order of Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. He died year 95 after Hijrah. So, 20 years he was the governor of Iraq. So he dies 95, subtract 20, that becomes 85, 75, he becomes a governor. Year 10 years after Hijrah, Rasulullah dies. So only 60 years after the, uh, the departure of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al thaqafi who calls himself Khalifatul Muslimin, the Caliph of the Muslims, who calls himself the representative of Rasulullah, he comes and during his 20 years of his Khilafah, of his governor, being a governor, he killed more than 120,000 followers of Ahl al-Bayt and Muslims. 120,000 divided by 20 years. How many it will be? Why? Because people let go of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Because people did not defend the command of the faithful Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. This is what happens to them. And Kitab Buruj al-Dhahab al-Mas'udi, his historians, he writes that when he died at age, at year 95, he had more than 50,000 prisoners in his prisons. He would sit, for lunchtime, for example, he would say, I, want, I don't have any appetite to eat. I don't feel, I don't have any craving to eat anything. Bring one of the Shia of Ali. They will bring one young individual. It's very gruesome. They will bring an individual for him and he was okay, behead him. They will behead him and while the blood is gushing out, he said, okay, right now bring the table for the food. I, right now I crave for, eat, for eating food. Why? Because people did not come and defend Amir al Mu'amini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Imam Ali says in Ghurar al Hakam, uh, uh, page 422, Whoever slept at the time where he supposed to aid his wali, his guardian, the Imam of his time, he would be awakened by the brunt force shock of his enemy. These people didn't wake up. That's one event. That's one incident of how many Muslims were killed. Why? Because they did not follow. They did not defend the school of Ghadir. They did not follow the school of Ghadir, which is Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. Another event. Abdullah ibn Zubayr. In the battle of Jabal with Aisha against the commander of the faithful Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib He comes to the war. In that war, thousands of people are killed. All Muslims. Abdullah ibn Zubayr joins Mus'ab ibn Zubayr. In the battle against Bukhtar ibn Thaqafi, more than 15,000 people, Muslims, are killed. And after that, when Muslim Mukhtar is killed, 7,000 people come and they surrender. He and couple of days he beheads all the 7,000 people. Is that enough? No. Let me give you more. Waqa'atul Harra happens 63rd, 63rd year after Hijrah. Basically, uh, after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. There was a revolution in Medina. Yazid sends an army leading by Abdullah ibn Hanbala to go to Medina. And he says, for three days, Mubah, anything you want to do, do in Medina. They come and they attack Medina. The army coming from Sham to Medina. When they get to Medina, all of the men, more 1,700 companions of Rasulullah were killed and 10,000 other people were also killed within these three days. And within, within Ibn Qutayb narrates, historian, a non-Shia narr narr narrates that a soldier walked into a house looking for whatever he could get. He didn't find anything. He, while she, he found a woman sitting, she was breastfeeding. He took the infant 
from her lap and he took the baby and he smashed his head to the wall. Look at these barbaric animals. We cannot even call them animals. And narrators narrate that after one year from the Waqa'atul Harra, 1,000 child were born out of wedlock. Haram. Adultery. How many adulteries were committed during the Waqa'atul Harra? That 1,000 child were born out of it. Why? All of these bloodsheds, why? All of these disasters, why? Because they didn't follow the school of Ghadir. They didn't defend the Imam of their time, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. They didn't give their allegiance and they were not committed with Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. That's what happens. The same thing for us, for you and I. Us as a Shia of Ali, if we don't stand up, defend the Imam of our time, Imam Mahdi Ajrullah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif, and answer the misconceptions that are out there remove the misconceptions from our families our relatives educate ourselves about the religion follow the path of ahl al-bayt truly not only saying well i'm the shia of ali but i don't know anything from the narrations of ali ibn abi talib my akhlaq doesn't match any of the akhlaq of ali ibn abi talib fatima to zahra sallallahu alayhi and ahl al-bayt ajma'in what kind of follower i am what kind of follow, what kind of follower am i so this is a responsibility that we have. This is what we learn from the Lady of Light, Fatima al-Zahra, salamullah alayha. So coming out, lecturing, spreading the knowledge of Ahl Bayt alayhim salam informing people that Islam, the true Islam, is not the Islam of Saqifa, it's Islam of Ghadir. Third, the third way that she defended her Imam and brought attention to the Khilafah, that was usurped by the Khulafa, by Abu Bakr and Omar and other people, crying and mourning and shedding tears day and night and day and night. For those who speak, who, who can read Arabic, Kitab Baytul Ahzan by Sheikh Abbas Al Qubmi, beautiful book to read. And also, it's been translated in Farsi, Ranj Haya Fatima. Very important book to read. Let us read about how much she was shedding tears. One, for her losing her father. And second, when people would come and tell her, Fatima, you cry a lot. Why are you crying so much? Well, your father died. One day, two days, three days, five days, one month, two months. Enough. She would bring attention to the oppression that befell them. From the Khilafah that they took away from her husband. Not again, I will emphasize, not because Ali ibn Abi Talib is her husband. No, she's defending the Imam of her time. For her, Ali ibn Abi Talib is Imam, then husband. And she keeps, a companion comes to, uh, of, of the Holy Prophet. She used to come, she used to go to Uhud to a uh, grave of Sayyid al-Shuhada Hamza and then come to Baqi. And she would cry, and she had her children with her, Hassan alayhi salam, or Hussein alayhi salam, Zainab salamullah alayha, Umm Kulthum, and she would cry. Person comes and tells her, you cry a lot, why is it that she, you are crying? She said, well, I'm crying because of the God-given right that was given to commander of the faithful Amir al-Mumina Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, they usurped it. He said, well, why didn't he, why didn't he, uh, emphasize on it why he didn't secure his khilafah while he was alive your father was alive why he didn't secure it she replies didn't she didn't he did he leave any excuse after the event of ghadir 120,000 people gathered he gives the last and the longest sermon more than two hours in the heat of the desert he gives lecture and then he for three days he makes people to pledge allegiance men and women to pledge allegiance with the commander of the faithful Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. men would come and shake hand Abu Bakr and Omar and the rest of the people came and they pledged allegiance with him with the commander of the faithful and the woman they brought a curtain and they brought a, a bowl and he, he placed his hand on the right side and the, they would come and they, they placed their hand on the other side they pledged everybody pledged allegiance with the commander of the faithful is there any excuse left for people after the event of Ghadir, this is what she replied to them. Look, read the ceremony of Ghadir. 
beautiful sermon. There is no room for excuse for anyone after Ghadir, she is saying. That was another way. Her showing how to defend the imam of your time. How for us, for you and I, even today, we need to defend the commander of the faithful Amir al Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, and Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, and the imam of our time, Imam Mahdi ajrullah ta'ala al sharif. It is our responsibility. How? We're discussing it. Another way. Disassociating from the people who usurped the caliphate and boycotting them. Came after what happened to her. After they smashed her behind the door, after they broke her ribs, after she miscarried her baby, after taking the Khilafa, after taking the Fadak, Abu Bakr and Umar, they came to the house of Amir Mumina Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. They knocked on the door. Amir Mumina Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam goes to the door. He opens the door. They said, We came here, we came to ask forgiveness from Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha. He says, Well, let me ask. Let me go ask permission. He comes to her and he says, do you give permission for these two to come? He says, this is your house and I'm your servant. Look at the beauty. Inshallah, we'll talk about it. The relationship between wife and husband and how it should be from the lives of, life of Ahl Bayt, salam, especially Fatima to Zahra, salam, Allah, alayha, and the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib. Alayha. They walk in. He convinced her to let them come in. They walk in, they sit in front of her. They say, Salamu Alaikum. She turns her face. She doesn't reply to her salam, to their salam. What does that tell you and I? I would just say one thing. Replying to the salam of a Muslim is wajib. That's it. You got it. Replying to the salam of Muslim is wajib. They come on the other side. They say salam to her again. She doesn't reply back. And then this happened again, they leave. Showing this association from those people who took the Khilafah away from the command of the faithful. Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Again, not that she, they really want the Khilafah. No, she wanted for us. <coughs> because she sees what is going to happen to the Muslim nation if they do not give pledge of allegiance and follow Amir al-Mu'mini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. She's seeing this. She's seeing the future. She's seeing every bloodshed that will happen by the school of Saqifah. She's seeing this. So she won the Khilafah for the commander of the faithful, not as a favor, no, because of the people themselves. People, come. Imam Ali alayhi salam is the best option for you. The commander of the faithful will take your hand to salvation. You'll attain Allah's satisfaction. You will have a prosperous life in this world and life after death. But we don't see it. We see within the verses of the Holy Quran also, which is mentioned that if people, chapter 7, verse 96, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَحْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لفتحنا عليهم بركات من السماء والأرض ولكن كذبوا فأخذناهم بما كانوا يكسبون. What a beautiful verse. Chapter 7, verse 96. If the people of the towns have believed and been pious, Iman, Iman to what? Iman Amir Mumini Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Certainly, we would have opened to them blessings from the heaven and earth, but they denied. They denied believing in Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. They were scared. They didn't know the status and the merits of Ali Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. As Imam Hussein alayhi salam says, An nas abidu dunya wa dinu laqun ala an suratihim. People are slave of this world. And dunya and akhirah and deen, it's only deen is only a saliva in their mouth. If they want deen, they will take it. They don't want deen, they won't take it. So she wants people to attain salvation. She wants people to have a prosperous life in this life and life after death by following the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib. But people don't listen. 
But people won't pay attention. People won't accept. So this is tragic moment we see within the life of Ahlul Bayt So one way, this is the way she disassociate herself and boycott them. Also, he, she says to Amir Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, Usika an la yashhad ahadun janazati. I don't want any of these people who oppressed me to be within my burial ceremony. Min ha'ula alladhina zalamuni wa akhadhu haqqi and they took my right, I don't want them to be in my burial ceremony. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوِّي They are my enemy. Rasulullah says, إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَرْضَى لِرِضَى فَاطِمَةِ وَيَغْضِبُ لِغَضَبِهَا Allah is satisfied and happy when she is happy and satisfied. And Allah is angry when she is angry. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوِّي وَعَدُوُّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ let them call themselves whatever they want to call. They are Adu Rasulullah. Let them call themselves Khalifatul Muslimin. Do not let any of them pray on me, on my dead body. Don't. Even to that moment, I want to show that I was not happy and satisfied with them. I was angry at them. وَلَا مَنْ أَتْبَرَعْهِمْ وَاتْفِنِّي فِي اللَّيْلِ إِذَا هَدَأَتُ الْعُيُونِ وَنَامَتِ الْأَبْصَارِ Bury me at night time when their eyes sleep and everything calms down. Bury me then. I don't want any of them to be there for me. Even to my last minute on earth, even after my departure, I don't want any of them to come and be and say, okay, we attended their burial ceremony. So we have to be very careful. Defending the Imam of her time. Last but not least, going to the house of Muhajirin and Ansar every night, knocking on their Salaamu Alaikum, Alaikum as -salam. I am Fatima, daughter of Rasulullah. Yes, daughter of Rasulullah. This is Amir Mumin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. MashaAllah, how can we help? Do you remember Ghadir? Yes, we remember. Didn't you pledge allegiance to Amir Mumin? Yes, we did. Don't you want to defend him? Uh, yes, but you know, everybody accepted and we just go with the mass. Go with the flow. Do not be the one who stands the opposite. Imam didn't have enough companions. If Imam, according to Hadith, if Imam had 40, 4 zero. If Imam had 40 companions, he would have taken his Khilafah back. He didn't have it. An Imam of our time doesn't have 313 companions. This is what we learn. So Lady Fatima, in any way possible, she showed her abomination toward the people who usurped the God-given rights from Imam Ali. And the enemies of Lady Fatima, in their defense, they used absurd and ridiculous reasoning and fabricated narrations. That gives us responsibility. That we have to defend the right of Ahlul Bayt That we have to be defending the right of Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha. When it comes to Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha and the Amir Mumini Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, the truth must be said. She wants by even her grave to be hidden. Let us ask this question. Let us ask from any non-Shia. Rasulullah had this daughter, which he, Aisha narrates that Rasulullah used to kiss the hand of Fatima to Zahra on numerous occasions. Every time that he would see Fatima to Zahra, he would kiss the hand of Fatima to Zahra. Why? Why this happens? Why, do, why her martyrdom date is not confirmed? 45 days, 70 days, 90 days. Why is that confirmed? Because these questions needs to, be, needs to come out. The way that she cried and made people to come and ask questions, and she brings them, bring attention to the Khilafah, to Amir Mumin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, and to the Khilafah that was taken from him. This is what our responsibility. That we say her grave is hidden. Why? Ask the non-Shia. Why? The daughter of Rasulullah. 
that the grandchildren of Rasulullah are from her. Why her grave is hidden? Let's ask this from any non-Shia and see what is their reply. Do they have any reply? This is the way that she defended even until today. Her sermon guides people to the path of Ahl Bayt. Her grave, not knowing her grave, her merits, her ahadith, her narrations all bring back to the Khilafah of Amir Mumin Ali ibn Abi Talib Inshallah, we leave the rest for tomorrow night. What else we can learn from the life of Fatima al Zahra? Salamullah alayha. It is difficult in the presence of the shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Sayyid Shabab Ahl al Jannah, reciting the Masa'ib of his mother Fatima al Zahra. Salamullah alayha. This is the first time, first year for me being Fatimiya, having the honor of sitting in front of the shrine, in front of the dome and the minarets of Aba Abdullah al Hussein and reading the, the Masa'ib and the tragedy that befell. Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. How difficult it was for Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, after the event of the door. How difficult it was for her to come and breathe. Just imagine that. Imagine a broken rib. Not one, not two, her broken ribs. Every inhale and exhale. How excruciating that could be. We cannot imagine it. We have a little bit of chest pain. I, I remember one of my relatives, he had a, a heart surgery done. And after that heart surgery, I called him. He said, Sheikh, day and night, I remember Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayhi. I told him, how? He said, because I have to, I cannot take, I mean, complete and full inhale and exhale. With every inhale and exhale, I feel pain. And that was an open heart surgery and he had comfort and he had a lot of other her broken ribs one two many of her ribs were broken and she miscarried her baby and the slap by the enemy of ahl al-bayt and the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on her face and her elbow one after one how much pain she suffered after rasulullah these people did not appreciate and did not Honor the family of Rasulullah, the daughter of Rasulullah, the door of Rasulullah and the house of Rasulullah where angel Israel comes and he asks permission to enter. Jibra'il comes and with his wing asks permission before entering the house of Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha. May the hand of the person who burns this door to be broken and cut off. How difficult it was for Fatima to Zahra day to day looking after Imam Hassan alayhi salam, looking after Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and she tries to tries to hide her face and her bruises from Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. Every time that she would Imam Ali would come, she would put her head down and with her hijab she would cover her face so Ali ibn Abi Talib won't see her face. He won't see the bruises on her face. How difficult it was for Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam to see her flower, to see her wife melting hour after hour. And she had to look after the children and how she took care of the responsibility within the house. And even with the broken ribs, even with what she went through, she still went door to door at the night defending the Imam of her time, trying to bring people attention to Imam Ali alayhi salam, trying to get some companions for this oppressed. One day she came after she gave the ceremony. She comes home and she sees Amir Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam sitting the way she say, Oh Ali, what is it with you that you're sitting the way that Janine, that the baby within the womb, that she sits basically holding your, your, feet together and you're holding and sitting tightly together what is it with you she said that oh ali i've heard that people in outside 
they don't say salam to you. Imam Ali alayhi salam said something that after he saying such statement, Lady Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha, she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten my death. She say, he said, oh Fatima, is not that only they don't say salam to me. Oh Fatima, when I say salam to them, when I approach them with their salam, they don't say salam back to me. That was the time that she, she, she said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, Take me away from this people. Allah la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalimin wa sayalamu al-ladheena zalamu ayya munqalabin yanqalibun wal-aqibati lil-muttaqeen. Let us raise our hand by the blessing of Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam, by the oppression that Ahl al-Bayt befell Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salam, by the blessing of of these shrines of Ahl Bayt alayhi salam, shrine of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and the shrine of Abu al-Fadl Abbas alayhi salam. O oh Allah, by the blessings of the tears of Abu Abdullah al Hussein when he was next to the body of her mother, when she when he came and he came and he found out because Lady Fatima to Zahra, when she went to the room, she told Asma, "Come later on. If call me, if I didn't call, if you don't, if I don't reply, know that I have departed this world." She was was there she came after a while she came and she called Fatima to Zahra oh my lady she didn't she didn't hear any reply she started shedding tears that was the time that Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein they walked in Imam Hassan was on her chest Imam Hussein was by her feet and they were shedding tears oh Allah by those tears hasten the appearance of our beloved Imam Imam Mahdi Ajallah Ta'ala Faraj al-Sharif Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Do and